Welcome to project number four. And in this project, we're going to be talking about React hooks. So what I've done is I've navigated inside my hooks folder. So four dash React hooks inside the app.js. And then I've just created a new component that is called app that is rendering up to the screen. And then inside my index HTML of that folder, I have gone ahead and just updated the document title. And this is going to render out our document title and then we're going to have app showing on the screen. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead into my index.css and then inside the body, I want to give the body a padding of five rem on the top and bottom and 1.5 rem on the left and right, and then give it a max width of 1100 pixels and a margin inline of auto. This will enable everything to be centered so that now we don't have to look to the top right, we can just simply look right here. And then you know what, I think perhaps let me increase the font size to 1.5 rem to make it just a bit bigger and much more visible. So the first hook that we're going to be talking about is called the state hook or it's called use state. So therefore the convention whenever you're dealing with hooks or whenever you want to create multiple hooks in your component is that inside your source folder, you create a new folder that is called hooks. And then inside the hooks folder, you can now go ahead and create, for example, we want to talk about the state hook. So I want to just call it state.js. And then inside here, I can say RFC, which is going to generate this component for me, save that. And then back inside my app.js, I can go ahead and render the state component, which is coming from hooks forward slash state, so that now I can view and we're going to have state right there. So the use state hook works in the following ways. First of all, all hooks in React have to be imported as named imports from React and they all have to be named use. They all have to be prefixed with the name or the term use. So in this case, we're talking about the state hook. So it is called use state. There is another hook that is called the effect hook. It is called use effect. There's another hook that is called the transition hook and it is called use transition. So that is a naming convention and all hooks must be prefixed with use and they have to be declared at the top level of your component, meaning the hooks have to be the first item right here. So declare hooks right there. So the way the use state hook works is that it works by using what is called array destructuring. So I can declare an array here and then I can destructure the array. So let me say something like people and set people and then I can initialize this to use state and then I can pass in an empty array. Now what this will do therefore is that it creates a state value, which is the first variable right here. So the first one here is a state value, which is going to be populated with whatever the initial value of the use state hook is. So for example, if I go ahead and say const log type of people, I can go ahead in my console I can inspect and then if I check this out in the console, you'll notice that it says, why is it saying an object? It shouldn't be saying an object, it should be saying an array. Let me just initialize this to a string first of all, just check whether it's working correctly. So you can see right there. So it is a string. Oh, you know what? Arrays are detected as objects in JavaScript, that's why. So you can see that we can check the type of the people state value and it is a string by default because this initialization right here is the one that populates the state value. And then this second value is the function that controls how you access the state value. So for example, if I wanted to change this value from an empty string, I would do something similar to the following. I can go ahead and say function update value and then I'm going to say set people, and then I'm going to pass in my string. So let me just pass in my name inside here, save that. And then now if I go ahead and say update value, so call the function, and then now go ahead and console log people again after this value has, this function has been called, then what you'll notice is that my name is now printed out, but then we see that we have an error. That is because you should not do this in React. I just did this for the purposes of demonstrating the example, but you should not do this. Okay, so we already know that this is the state value and this is the function. 
And the naming convention that you'll usually see being followed is that the function is going to be prefixed with set. Now, this is not required, but it is a naming convention and it will help you to remember what the function is holding the value of. So in this case, if I just say set people somewhere in my code base, then I know that it is referencing the people's state value. Now, how do you go ahead and show this state value in your UI? Well, it's very simple. You just need to go wherever you want your state value to be visible and then just go ahead inside curly brackets and then render out your state value. So in this case, if I say people, now it's going to be empty because people by default is an empty string. But if I change this into my name, you will notice that now the div is now passing in my name. So this is a very, very nice example. And another example that I want to talk about the use effect is how to control inputs. So we already saw in our to-do list project that we can transform inputs into controlled inputs, meaning they're going to be controlled by React. So if I go ahead and do the following, I can go ahead and create another state value here called text and set text. And I can set this equal to use state. And by default, I'm just going to say default text. And then I can create an input. So instead of just showing people inside here, I want to create an input with a type of text. And then the name is going to say text. The ID is going to say text. We don't need, even need the ID because it's just for demonstration. And then the placeholder, placeholder is going to say enter some text. And then let's just set it to required. And then below this, let's have a paragraph that renders out the text that we have on the top. So if I save this by default, we're just going to say an input and then default text. So what you want to do is that when we type inside this input, then this default text is going to be updated. So the way we do that is we go ahead and pass in a value on the input and then we set it equal to our state value. And then when I save that, you'll notice that we cannot type inside here anymore. That is because we need to have an on change on this input so that we can update the value. So an on change event handler here, and then we're going to target the synthetic event of E and then say set text into E dot target dot value. And what this will do is that it's going to update the text state value depending on whatever we type in because this function is going to be called for every single keystroke that we make. And we know that this function is the one that updates our state value. So when I go ahead and save that and we're rendering the text inside here, then I can go ahead and remove default text and you can see that it updates in real time. And then if I change this into my name, for example, we have that. And I can add in some more text so I can say is a front end web developer based in Nairobi, Kenya. And I can see you already have some nice looking input inside here. And by the way, this font is the default font on Ubuntu. So I had to reinstall my operating system because I messed it up just a bit. So I installed Ubuntu. So that's why the default font is just a bit different from what I've been having in the first three projects. So that is going to be it for the use state hook. So in the next video, we are going to begin to talk about the use effect hook.